This is what the application looks like. The first thing that we're going to do is take an image and drag it right into the application. It will open automatically. And now we'll be able to see this particular image in 3D space in that top right hand corner there. You'll notice there's a lot of greens for the trees, some of the cyan blues for the sky. The way that we're viewing it now is similar to waveform monitor in the sense that you have the brightest parts up at the top and the darkest parts at the bottom. But if I right click and go ahead and drag this around, you'll see what essentially is a color wheel. And now we can better see the distribution of colors, the greens that I mentioned before, and the blues in the sky. With the neutral colors right in the middle. Here I'm pressing and holding right click and dragging it back to the initial view that we had. You can make adjustments within that particular window. If you want to be very particular in what you have to choose, you can scroll the middle mouse wheel if you have one, and that will essentially zoom in. And now you'll be able to specifically pick the color that you want. The first thing that I want to show you is the top tool, and that's our lightness and saturation adjustment. As I mentioned before, we can use this particular view to choose where we want to make the adjustment, maybe parts of the scene that are a little bit brighter or potentially something in the middle. But the easiest way to make the adjustments is just to left click on the picture itself, left click and hold, and then if you drag down, you'll make that part darker. And then if you drag up, that's when you can make it brighter. Also, if we drag to the right, it will make everything less saturated around that point. And if we drag to the left, it will make everything more saturated. Now I'll right click in the area where our 3D model is and choose reset LUT. This way we can bring it back to where it was initially. You can also go to the three dots at the bottom and there's also an option there for reset LUT. The next tool underneath that is the color tone. What this is, is similar to a color wheel in whatever video editing application that you have. So once again, I will click on somewhere in the sky and just underneath our 3D model, you'll see that color wheel and we can use that as reference to determine what we're going to change the colors to. So once I left click, I can drag this all around. Our 3D model gets adjusted and we can determine how we want our scene to look. Our next tool is the contrast adjustment. Underneath our model, you'll see where it shows something similar to a curves tool in your editing program. To be clear, that's just a visual representation. If I drag up, it adds more contrast around that point that we chose. And of course, if we pull it down, it will do the opposite. And we can see that visually represented in the feedback area, which I'm showing you now. I went ahead and reset the LUT just to show what happens if we choose a different point. So now I'll choose something brighter, those clouds potentially in this scene. Now when I make the adjustment, you'll see that it has a different impact. Once again, indicated by the feedback option at the bottom of the screen. The last tool at the top is the color twist. So we'll select a part of our scene and we can adjust the hue of everything as indicated once again by the feedback window at the bottom of the application. Now up to this point, all the tools have affected the scene globally. So it's affecting every part of the scene. So the second one in is the hue range. I'm going to reset the LUT so we're back to our original image. And now we're only going to adjust the colors in the sky. When you left click, it shows a temporary mask and anything in black will not be adjusted. Anything lighter or in gray will be adjusted with anything that's closer to white being adjusted the most. Once we start making our adjustments, the mask disappears and we can see the adjustments that we're making. What you'll notice here is that the sky is obviously changing colors, but the trees remain the same exact color. What you may have noticed too is the transition from the colors that we've adjusted to the other colors in the scene isn't exactly smooth and you can see a lot of artifacts in our reference image. There's actually a tool in the top right hand corner and this will just smooth out those artifacts a little bit. To be fair, this particular image is a JPEG, but if you were using a PNG or even better a TIFF, this would perform a lot better. Also in the top right hand corner, we have a before and after. If you click on the eye symbol and keep it pressed down, it will show you the before image. So that's just a quick way that you can do a comparison. Now, if you're not satisfied with what it's selected when you left click and hold to see what adjustments you've made, you can adjust the tolerance right next to the tool that we selected. If I lower the amount, the road that was selected in the middle of the scene is now not going to be affected as much. 
Our next tool at the bottom is the saturation range. And of course, this is pretty self-explanatory. Anywhere you click within our reference photo, we we'll use the area that you selected as the reference point as a determination about what other parts of the scene it's going to be affecting. First, I'm going to go to the top where we have our lightness and saturation adjustments. Here, I'm going to be using those particular highly saturated leaves at the top of our scene. So now it's going to choose the most saturated parts of our image. And then once I start making our adjustments by moving the mouse around, you'll notice it's only affecting those parts of our footage. In this case, I'm making it less saturated. Then of course I can drag in the other direction and make them more saturated if I prefer. One quick note about the hue saturation tool, you can actually drag it diagonally. This way you're adjusting saturation and brightness at the same exact time. Our last tool is the custom range, and this is probably one of the most powerful ones. The first option you see is HSL, which you may already be familiar with, and that's our hue, saturation, and luminance. The nice thing about this tool is that box on the right, if you click that, it will keep the mask up. This way you can hover your mouse around the scene, and it will show you in real time what parts of the scene that you're selecting. Once you're satisfied with an area that you want to adjust, you can left click and it will hold it there. It may move around a little bit as you drag the mouse off of the reference image, but wherever you clicked on is what will be adjusted. Now let's look at our 3D model on the right hand side. Any area in that light gray is what is being selected. So as I make the adjustments, more of that area may become lighter gray. And of course, if I drag in the other direction, less will be covered. Along with the HSL option that we have, we also have DRB, which stands for Diameter, Radius, and Brightness. Now, without getting into the actual specifics of it all, suffice it to say this is a more refined way of making masks. What I'll attempt to do here is make some adjustments and you can look at our 3D model and by looking at the parts of the model that are in the light gray, it will show you which areas are being selected. The nice thing about this tool is that you're not confined to the hue selections that you make. So depending on the type of reference image that you have, if you're not having much success with the HSL option, you can change it over to the DRB and that may assist you with getting a better key. Any adjustment that we make is recorded in that timeline in the bottom left hand corner of our screen. We can use the back arrow or if we drag our mouse over those little gray dots, every adjustment that we've made will be shown in the reference image. For example, let's say that we actually like the adjustment that we made to this reference image here. We can leave that selected all the way in the right hand corner, we can click on the eye and that will give us a snapshot. So now we can refer back to that anytime we want. If I left click on it, it loads. But the other thing that we can do is blend the two. So if I drag the opacity slider at the bottom of this window here, it will mix that snapshot that we have with the image that we're working on now. Right underneath that opacity slider, we have an option to crossfade or add. And if we like what we've done, we can hit apply. In the top left corner is where we can pull in some LUTs. There's also a media library at the bottom that can hold our images. Here I have three of the vision color LUTs in this folder. If we click on any of them, it will automatically apply it to our footage. And the nice thing about this is we can actually add these as snapshots too. If we hit the plus icon, it will put it in the same area as our other snapshots. And obviously the same options apply. If we want to adjust the opacity so it's not as intense, we can use that opacity slider. And by the way, if I leave the opacity at 100, what you're looking at there is the LUT. So if you're curious about what adjustments a particular LUT makes, that model will show you in 3D space what colors are being adjusted and potentially what brightness is being adjusted to. One quick adjustment that you can make in the 3D model is adjusting the brightest point and the darkest point. Of course, if we click on the white dot and bring it down, we're lowering our highlights. And then of course, if we click on the black dot at the bottom and lift that up, now we have our lifted blacks. Let's quickly run through everything again. What I'll do is come over to our global adjustments, come up to our tool with the contrast, and I'll choose the trees in the middle. Drag up, so now we're adding contrast using that particular point as a pivot point. Now at the top, I'll choose our lightness and saturation. Choose the trees off to the left-hand side there, somewhat in the middle, and we'll drag that to the right. Now we're making those a little less saturated. And now we're using our color tone, and maybe we wanna make this whole scene a little bit more warmer. As I mentioned before, this is similar to the color wheel in any video app that you have. You can think of this maybe as a white balance adjustment. And now we have a before and after. And it was just that quick to make all those adjustments. We can also adjust the opacity or the intensity in the top right hand corner. If I drag it to the left, it will be not 
as much adjustments. And of course, if I continue to drag it to the right, as mentioned, now we're increasing the intensity of any adjustments that we've made. This is similar to Lightroom, where you can go above 100 and continue to adjust the amount. Once we've made all of our adjustments, we can come up all the way to the top right and choose export. Here we can actually choose an image that we can use as the reference for our LUT. You can select the size, the name of the photo, what type it is, and the location that you're saving it to and hit save image. On the right hand side is where we can name the LUT. Right underneath that is the size of our LUT. We can choose the 16, 32, or 64. Of course, right underneath that is where we can name the LUT. And then the option below that is where we want to store the LUT. Pretty self-explanatory. Click on save LUT and it puts it in that folder. Not only do they have the standalone application, but they also have a plugin that you can use in DaVinci Resolve. I've opened up the OpenFX panel, scrolling down to the bottom where we have our Photon connector, and I'll drag that onto our node. Clearly at this point, there's not much to it, but essentially what this connector does is connect it back to the standalone application. I already have the application open, so I'm going to click on connect. And now we have some more buttons. We have disconnect, render, and remote quality will be what the quality will look like over on the standalone application. Because I know my computer can handle that based on the testing that I've done, I'm going to change that to 100%. So if we switch over to the application now, we have our reference image. As before, we can make our adjustments using his jacket as reference. I'll reduce the contrast. And then maybe we'll do a little bit of a hue twist and I'll choose the red in his shirt and potentially push that a little bit more red. Now, if we head back into DaVinci Resolve, nothing's changed yet. What we have to do is come up to render, wait a second, and then it will update our image. If we head back to the program, you'll notice that they're the same exact image. You can actually use this on multiple nodes, but only one connector can connect back to the application at one time. Let's drag a second copy onto our second node. You may notice that it has a different name now. Before it was Photon Connector 0. This one's Photon Connector 1. Now there is a disconnect button on the first one, but all we have to do is click on connect on the Photon Connector 1. Now we get the buttons that we had on the first one, and the first one now has disconnected everything. You may notice that it caused our image to look a little bit different, but if I disable that node, now we're back to where we were just a minute ago. And then if I disable that first node, that's our original footage. What's happening here is that it's essentially taking what's being done in the program and doing it again. So this is our adjustments being done a second time. I'm going to reset the LUT, and now we'll just make one adjustment. I will head up to our color tone, and then drag everything towards blue so that our scene is a little bit cooler. Now I'm going back into DaVinci Resolve. Once again, our footage hasn't changed. I'll click on render, wait a second, and then now our footage has been updated. If I disable that node, now we're back to our first adjustment because we're just looking at that first node. And if I disable that, once again, we're back to our original footage. If you're interested in some videos that I've made about Vision Color, I'm putting them on the screen right now. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. All my links are in the description below. I definitely think that you should check it out. It's a really fun program, and I'll see you in the next video.